What is up, XRP community? Welcome back to another video. Happy Easter. Happy Sunday. Thank you for joining me. I want to talk about why XRP isn't a security, some statements from an actual attorney, Ripple suing Google, the plan set forth in 2016 by the Bank of Inter International Settlements, the International Monetary Fund, and the World Bank for utilizing something just like XRP. They don't explicitly say XRP, but they literally describe something just like XRP. And how XRP is like gold. All right, let's hop right into it. First off, guys, I want to show you this little motivational clip. Uh, there's a, ma a massive UFC fight this week, and this guy's a world champion. He had lost three times to this guy. And typically, when you lose three times in mixed martial arts to one person and then come back and win the world title from them, it just doesn't happen. But it just goes to show his utmost confidence, and it's some, some really motivational stuff, in my opinion. Just hold the mic real quick. Yes, sir. Hey, sure, sure. Listen up. I want to say something. People, Earth, I need to say something. Listen to me. I hope every one of you behind your screens on this arena can feel this level of happiness just one time in your life. I hope all of you can feel how fucking happy I am just one time in your life. But guess what? You will never feel this level of happiness if you don't go for something in your own life, when they knock you down, when they try and shit on you, when they talk shit about you, and they try and put their foot on your neck. If you stay down, you will never ever get that resolve. Fortify your mind and feel this level of happiness as you rise one time in your life. But I'm blessed to be able to feel this shit again and again and again. Yeah, so there's beauty in the struggle, ugliness in the success. I don't care how old you are, but some of the most fulfilling f things in life, the best happiness, happiness, fulfillment, whatever you want to call it, comes from taking a challenge and going through the trenches and achieving that goal. So I just wanted to lead with that. So Jeremy Hogan, he says, the number one reason why XRP is not a security, very long thread, and there's a lot of legal jargon. So I use artificial intelligence to explain it to us like we're five. Essentially, XRP is a type of digital money that some people thought might be considered a security, which means it's like a special type of investment. However, a security has to meet certain legal rules to be called that. An XRP doesn't really fit those rules. The rules say that there has to be a special agreement called a contract between the people that sell XRP and the people that buy it, where the seller promises to do certain things to help the buyer make money. But the government has not shown that there was actually any kind of agreement with XRP. So it's not really a security this all goes back to the investment contract and we haven't seen the sec put forth solid arguments on why xrp is an investment contract speaking of the sec summary judgment decision by may 6th another lawyer john deaton he says if you look at previous cases by judge torres somewhere between the march 6th and may 6th we'll get a ruling this is the general timeline for summary judgment decision Personally, guys, we've been waiting two months for this lawsuit. I don't really mind waiting longer. If you look at what XRP and Ripple have done in the past two years, growing X Rapid, the product that uses XRP, 800% while there's a lawsuit, while there's a crypto downtrend, while all these crypto companies are failing, they're still building. So quite frankly, I don't care when the lawsuit is going to end because I'm not holding my XRP for the short term. I'm holding it for years. I'm holding it long term. And the CBDC pyramid released by the Bank of International Settlements. Really quick, guys, if you need an exchange to get XRP, I recommend Uphold. It's sleek, simple, secure. And it's where I dollar cost average and buy my XRP and Flare daily. A link to Uphold in the video description below. So on the left side of this pyramid, you have consumer needs. On the right side, you have CBDC um, institutional needs. And as the pyramid goes up, it says lower level choices feed into subsequent decisions. At the top of the pyramid, the most important thing is cross-border payments. And this is exactly what XRP and Ripple do. This is a perfect time to talk about what I was saying at the beginning of the video, how XRP and Ripple will be used. So this was a conference in 2016 called Bretton Woods at 75, celebrating the IMF and World Bank turning 75 years old. The focus was how the US dollar as the world's reserve currency is something less optimal. The second message was that, was that there's a need for more equal power between major currencies. The panel hosted representatives from EU and China. And essentially, the Bretton Woods Conference was what happened after the World War in 1944. That, and that's what established the US dollar as the world reserve currency. So really quick, this is related to that. 
The Bank of England is pushing towards plans to develop a digital currency called Bitcoin. Just in today, France's president says Europe must reduce its dependency on the United States. Over the course of the past month, how many times have I talked about de-dollarization, whether it was Saudi Arabia, Russia, China, all these different countries are doing more trade without the dollar. You had the president of what African country was it? Some country in Africa, the president warning not, not to hold dollars. And then we have this, this headline right here as well. Macron says Europe must not be a follower of the U.S. after meeting with the Chinese leader. So it's clear the dollar is on its way out. That's why this is so important. This was back in 2016. These big organizations, they already knew the dollar was on the way out. So it's the Keynes-Triflin plan. This was proposed in 1944, but instead we went with the dollar being the world reserve currency. But we can all agree now the dollar is on its way out. So the Keynes plan involves the creation of an international monetary unit, okay? A supranational currency, meaning not any one sovereign country. In, additional, uh, in addition to the supranational currency, there would be a new multilateral clearing system called the International Clearing Union, aka an international central bank. So they're telling you guys, this is the same group of people that established the dollar as the world reserve currency. And the backup plan was an international central bank with an international currency. I think we can all agree that we're trending towards globalization in all industries. And so when I look at this plan, I'm not telling you XRP will be the supranational currency, but they've been working for 12 years. They've been making all these partnerships and it's very clear it could fit this exact role. Will it? Only time will tell. Good tweet here from Crypto Erie from the Digital Pound Consultation Paper, okay? They basically outline what they need from distributed ledger technology and what they don't need. A white paper from the UK's National Cybersecurity Center concluded that distributed ledger technology is only likely to be useful in circumstances where all the following statements are true. And these all ring true for the XRP ledger. Multiple entities need to be able to write data. There is a lack of trust between entities writing data. There is no trusted central authority that can write data, right? We have no centralized uh, global central bank. If any one of the above statements is assessed to be false, this organization considers that a conventional technology like a database is more appropriate. Based on the bank's current thinking on requirements for the core ledger, the use of a centrally governed distributed database technologies might be more efficient. A lot of people don't like XRP in the crypto community because uh, cri crypto is all about decentralization, right? That's the name of the game. XRP is a little bit more centralized because Ripple as a company issued all the tokens and they hold half the supply. And so a lot of people say, oh, that's not, that's not decentralized. I see it as a positive. Do you guys really think that the central banks that have controlled the money for centuries are just going to be like, yeah, Bitcoin decentralization, come take over? Of course not. I see XRP as kind of like a, uh, a compromise, right? It's still decentralized. Ripple only runs one of the nodes and the rest of the 35 nodes are other companies, other organizations. It's very decentralized, but at the same time, it has a level of centralization that I think could drive adoption with these big banking institutions. Next story. This is from Zach Rector, and this is not... um super bullish for the lawsuit. I don't think Ripple CTO would ever tweet this out, right? Correct me if I'm wrong, but look at what he says. Ripple holds more than 60% of the XRP in existence. XRP is Ripple's most valuable asset by far. Ripple's future revenue is directly tied to the long-term price of XRP. I do not think he would be saying this stuff in 2023 with a lawsuit. XRP is what gives Ripple a revenue model that no one else has. XRP is Ripple's secret sauce. And this is kind of really crazy. Ripple can make about the same amount of money by building the price of XRP up by one penny as it can by signing 600 banks. So he's literally saying if Ripple can pump the price of XRP one penny, they can make more money than onboarding 600 banks. And then he says, how can you say XRP has nothing to do with Ripple? And let me know your thoughts in the comment section below about this. But Ripple and XRP... Sorry, Ripple and their lawyers have been arguing that Ripple and XRP are separate entities. XRP was set up before Ripple was even a company. But then I see these statements by David Schwartz and I'm like, this just doesn't look good, man. A good, tw a good tweet here from Zach Rector. And if you guys do have Twitter, my Twitter's at the bottom. It's also in the video description. Tweet me information. Best spot to contact me. David Schwartz says, XRP is an asset that can be used for settlement. It's kind of like gold. 
that can instantly teleport around the world. It does actually move value, and there's nothing to settle afterwards. So unlike gold, which is physical, it's heavy, it's hard to move it through the supply chain, XRP can move that value instantly for zero cost, right? So in a way, it is similar to gold. And talking about de-dollarization again, watch this little GIF. Trade time lapse, USA versus China. It's only a few seconds. And just watch how China starts to dominate. And it's clear China's a, a global power. We all understand this. The question is, as China gets more and more of these big trading partners, what is the USA going to do? I always say in 258 years of American history, we have not been in a war as the USA for 16 years. All right? The USA loves to fight wars. This is clear. It's our profit model. And I don't think they're just going to allow these other global powers to take away their trade. Okay, I covered this. I covered this. So Ripple is suing YouTube for not doing anything about the large amount of XRP crypto scams. I've had people reach out. Even my mother texted me saying, hey, is this an XRP giveaway where they put videos of Brad Garlinghouse and then there's a QR code and they say, scan the QR code, send your XRP and we'll send you back double. Guys, if it ever sounds too good to be true, it is too good to be true. But in my opinion, it's good to see Ripple going after YouTube because Gary Gensler and the SEC should really be doing this. While they're suing legitimate companies like Ripple, while Gary Gensler is going after Kim Kardashian for crypto ICO scams, they're not doing anything about these YouTube live streams that give thousands of viewers. And just imagine how much money has been scammed. I personally know people that have fallen for these scams. It's sad, but it's good to see that Ripple is clapping back towards YouTube. And now let's move to this right here. Fed now imminent. Take a listen. You know, live, just like me and everybody else here on this network. Except for not anybody on the other, other network, networks. right? You snooze, <laughs> so, you lose we, people. Yeah, I know. Well, I mean, listen, there's there's business news uh, today, even yeah. though it is a holiday, and uh, we're here to bring it to you. Uh, one of the interesting business stories that is getting some – it's it, it's essentially roiling the crypto industry, and I found this out after doing a, a hit on, on Laura Ingram's show, The Ingram Angle, last night, is this new Fed, new Fed Now program. Um, and it's it's essentially a di it's a first step to a digital payment system uh, that the Fed is going in to institute. And what, the, what a lot of people in the crypto industry believe, it's sort of the backdoor way to take over all the sort of digitization of. It's the backdoor way to take over all the digitization. A lot of people read about Fed now and they think, oh, XRP is going to be worthless because the Fed's making their own system. But keep in mind, guys, in 2018, XRP produced a 60,000% gain. And that was all just off you and me and other retail people FOMOing in and buying the asset, right? So the price can appreciate just off people buying it and being bullish on its long-term future. The fact that it provides value, the fact that it has one of the best, most, um, one of the best companies with tons of great leaders, right? The ex-treasurer of the United States under Obama, tons of executives from Wall Street between the team and the value proposition, the problems that XRP solves, super bullish, right? So in 2018, if it could produce those massive gains, imagine what it could do with actual use case by these big banks and also people buying it just out of speculation, all right? These big organizations like the Federal Reserve, JP Morgan, when, in, when the internet was coming out in the late 90s and the early 2000s, they were the same people flooding the internet, right? You had New York Times hot headlines saying the internet is a failure. People thought the internet would only be used for email, right? And now look at the internet. It permeates every corner of society. We're seeing the same thing here. JP Morgan, the Fed, all these big banks will try and do everything to hold crypto back until they have enough power to harness it, right? But ultimately, um, if you disagree that crypto is, I mean, if you're watching my video, you're obviously bullish on crypto, but we're in a low spot right now, but it's definitely here to stay. If you guys want $41 guaranteed for free, sign up with Webull, deposit one penny, and you could get up to 3K in free stocks. You're guaranteed a minimum value of 40 bucks in free stocks just for signing up and depositing a penny. Sell the stocks, buy some more XRP, do whatever you want, but don't miss out on your free $41 in stocks, potentially 300 or maybe even 3,000 if you're super lucky. A link to Webull in the video description below.
And if you guys finish the video, I want you to comment IMF in the comment section below when you watch the full video. It really supports the channel, so thank you for doing that. Comment IMF below. I'll try and, uh, try and respond to all those. God bless you guys. Take care of yourselves. Take care of your families. Until next time.